Welcome to the Bible study. Today I'm going to show you a name that's hidden in the Bible that has been talked about a lot. And people think that this character, Lilith, is only mentioned in things that are not canonical, that are not approved by the traditions of men. But I will show you what is hidden in the Hebrew, what has been censored for a long time. And this is why it's great to look up the original Hebrew roots of words, which the Old Testament was written in, and the Greek for the New Testament, because that's what it was originally written in. And the Blue Letter Bible is a wonderful website to be able to look things up. A red flag that something is being hidden or censored in the English versions of things. And remember, Jesus said in Mark 7, 13, the word of God is made null and void. It loses all of its power because of what? Because of the traditions of men. So the traditions of men censor it, and then we wonder why people aren't getting the power out of it they should. Well, I heard a pastor say, if you really love Jesus, pray to understand Hebrew and Greek, because that's what the Bible was originally written in. And I did, and within six months I started to understand things, and you can too. And the internet has wonderful, helpful places where you can look things up. But the Blue Letter Bible is wonderful. So what a red flag is, is when there's a word that only comes up once in the whole Bible, or a very few times, or where the translation is different. So let's look up the word screech. It's a red flag that maybe it doesn't mean what it says it means. Owl screech, okay. And we look it up and there are these numbers. Numbers next to something mean that, um, mean that it matches up with a certain word in the Hebrew, okay. So let's look this up. It's in Isaiah 34, 14, and it says, The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satire shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. Okay, let's see what it really means, what it really says. Isaiah 34, 14. This is what we're told it means in the English right there. And it says, there shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, everyone with her mate. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them. Okay, so it seems very interesting what's being said here. And he ca hath cast the lot of them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Okay, so this is sounding like a good thing that's happening, and that may be why they decided to censor it. Interesting. So let's look at what this word actually is means the screech owl word. Take away the diacritical marks. They make it confusing. That's put on by the traditions of men to say a word doesn't mean this and it does mean that. And the original biblical Hebrew didn't have those marks on there. So it's definitely traditions of men stuff to confuse people. Okay, so we have definitions for every word here. And wow, screech owl is Lilith right there. You can see it, Lilith. Lilith. It goes right to left in the Hebrew. That's a lamed, a yad, a lamed, a yad, and a tav. So, and this is an L sound, Y, L, Y, and a TH. Lilith is right there. So Lilith is actually in the regular, canonical, old-fashioned Bible, and not just in literature that's outside of it. Here we go. And you can see it right here. Lilith. There it is in the original Hebrew. And it's hidden because the traditions of men want you to think that God hates Lilith and that it's a bad thing. But the wild beasts of the, of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. And the satire shall cry to his fellow, Lilith shall also rest there. 
and find for herself a place of rest. There you go. This is a loving and forgiving God. When you look at the original scriptures, it's even more loving and forgiving than anybody can imagine. And it goes on and it says, there shall the great owl make her nest. You know, that's Lilith. And lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, everyone with her mate. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them. So this is a loving God that dies even for sinners, for everybody, and has an ideal that everybody shall find their mate and shall rest. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation they shall, shall they dwell therein. So obviously this was hidden by people trying to control the masses, the traditions of men, and try to make you think God's a hater when God actually is very loving and very forgiving, which Jesus came to fulfill the true word in the New Testament. So here we go. Now, so Lilith is totally, totally hidden with their word screech owl. Okay, so let's compare this word screech owl with the actual word owl because we know the screech owl Lilith this is another way you can test to see whether it's really bogus if the word owl were Lilith then it would make sense but you can see over here screech owl is used one time in the whole Bible and here it even makes a reference to the name Lilith Lilith the name of a female goddess known as a night demon who haunts the desolate places of Eden might be a nocturnal animal that inhabits desolate places, but right up here is the famous name Lilith that we have come to know. Okay. And is written about an outside, considered non-canonical, non-approved um, Jewish literature. So the censoring of Lilith, very interesting. We're here, God is actually saying something nice about Lilith, and that's why they had to take her out. She shall find rest. And then it goes on, as we read, where also she will be taken care of for generation to generation, and she will not be alone. So they're censoring a loving God because hate and fear is what controls the masses. And the word fear in the Hebrew can also mean understand, which would change a verse that says, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, to understand, to understanding God is the beginning of wisdom, which makes God more of your best friend rather than an evil, abusive parent. Um, so a lot is lost in translation, and what's lost is the forgiveness and the love. But pray to Jesus Christ, and he'll grant you wisdom. So let's look up the word owl and see if it is ever defined as Lilith, except for this one place where you can find it in the Bible by looking up the word screech, because it only comes up one time, and that's with Lilith. Okay, so owl. The word owl comes up Let's see, 10 times in eight verses. Okay, and there's little owls and there's big owls. So we can look up owl, this owl, and see if it looks anything like Lilith. No, that's the word for daughter, bath, daughter daughter right there. Okay, so that's not it. So that was referring to daughter of an owl. Obviously, let's look over here and see what this word is. Yeah, ana, feminine noun, an unclean bird, owl, ostrich. Okay, so this is owl. So the word owl, yeah, Anna, compare that with Lilith right here, Screech Owl right there, Screech Owl, 
versus Yana sounds nothing like Lilith. <laughs> so obviously this is a very hidden in the Hebrew sort of thing. Let's look it up again. Lilith right there. And at least here it tells us it is Lilith, but over here the way it's defined in the English is as a screech owl. Nothing could be less of a screech owl than Lilith could. And this is the actual word that is used every other time in the Bible whenever you refer to an owl. Here we go. All right, so. Let's see. Any other words for owl we haven't looked up yet? Last one we saw is, is used eight times. This one, kos, could be a cup or a kind of owl. 31 times is cup, three times is owl. That would be another thing that might be interesting to research because why would they switch it from cup to owl? So you can look down here at all the uses of it. You can see the word cup there. I mean, it's pretty arbitrary sometimes the way they switch words, but they do it to try to control the masses and things. So the little owl could mean the little cup and the great owl. Okay, and let's see what is the great owl and there's Yashuf. All right, great owl, eared owl, an unclean animal. There you go. All right. So there's a lot that can be revealed here, but basically you can find everything in the Bible. And when you look things up, you, it's fascinating what you will find. And um, to pretend that it doesn't exist and that it's not there is just a complete lie. So the way you would look it up once again would be to go to a website like the Blue Letter Bible where it brings up the original Hebrew if it's Old Testament or original Greek if it's New Testament that the Bible was written in because that's what they were originally written in. And then you can look up words and the way all you would have to do is look up the word screech because it only comes up one time and this is what is hidden and this is what is said and it's Isaiah 34 14 and it's about a very loving God and what does it say about the screech owl it says Isaiah 34 14 the wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island, and the satire shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. So this is for all of us. Seek the, the book of the Lord and read it. I encourage you, do Bible studies every morning and every night. It has blessed me with prosperity greater than anything. Doing Bible studies rather than organized religion, which waters down the word of God, make the traditions of men make the word of God null and void. But the true, pure word has power in it. And that's why Satan has tried to censor it for so long, because he doesn't want people finding the true power of a loving God that blesses us and prospers us in every way, that empowers me financially and academically and in every way that I actually surrender and give myself to God. The word and the word alone is that powerful. Doing Bible studies on YouTube and putting them out on your own internet channel, do it. It says the great commission of every Christian is to help spread this word to the ends of the earth. I did it and it has blessed me for the cons consistently for three years now that I've been doing it. And we're supposed to meditate on the word day and night anyway, according to the Bible. So go for it and do it. None, you'll get your own miracles. None shall want her mate from my mouth. It hath commanded and his spirit, it hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot of them and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. 
They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation, they shall dwell therein. That is a loving and forgiving God. And that's the Find out that your children trying to change your life. Find out about the promise on the other side.